Hello there, my friends, and welcome back to a new episode of TA with um, K. My name is McKay, and today slash uh, tonight's episode, depending on where you're, you're you're from, we're going to give you guys an update kind of on the S&P 500 on the higher time frames, something that we kind of see you know, potentially brewing that can give us a plan A and a plan B for the next week or so as it relates to stocks in general, which you know should give us some ideas uh, on Bitcoin, which we'll talk about, which will also lead to the ideas of what we can expect altcoins to do. Now, if that sounds interesting to you, as as always, please remember to like and subscribe, and let's go. It's T.A. with M.K. It's T.A. with M.K. All right, so to start out, we're on the SPX uh, daily chart. This is the S&P 500, and we're going to go over some percentages that I've been tracking. Now, understand that what I'm going to go over, at least for this next few minutes, as it relates to the uh, S&P 500, is a very, very basic idea. But one thing I learned from my mentor, the guy that taught me to trade, is sometimes your most, uh, your most basic trading ideas uh, have the highest hit rate. It's just that they require more patience, and, you know, I think that, a big reason why a lot of people don't always follow these is because they take longer to play out and crypto is such an emotional market with such volatility that often you know people go in too heavy it you know with a certain amount of money that they honestly can't afford to lose based on maybe a good idea but the minute that they, they zoom into lower time frames and it's not playing out the way that they hoped you know they they close the trade out at a loss or, or they just you know abandon ship so to speak and you know the trade ends up playing out you know and one of the things that i've noticed if you back test ideas on higher time frames is that there's a good chance it's going to play out in your favor more often than not it's just the question is do you have i guess the the ball so to speak to or the you know the the the, vin, the vindiction to just hold on to the trade rather than let the low time frames swing your emotions you know to and fro but anyway that was just a little bit of a I guess me kind of going off on a tangent, but let's get let's get back on track. So anyway, what I'm getting at is we're gonna double click and we're gonna go to this indicator on the bottom of my screen. It's called the stochastic RSI. And and then without even explaining to you what this means, just understand that if you look at it um, you know in the most black and white form, it goes from zero to a hundred. And this dark blue area, the top is around 80 and the bottom is around 20. Anytime you're above 80, that's considered quote unquote overbought it just means the stock the, the stock that you're tracking you know or the crypto in this case is a little overheated and most likely could use either a consolidation period or more than likely a pullback especially in these higher time frames uh, the reverse is true if it's below 20 it's considered oversold um, good chance that you're going to see at least a consolidation there a cooling off period and possibly uh, you know a bounce so anyway why do I bring that up? Well, as you can see right now, we're at 85.13, which is above 80. That's considered overbought, right? And what I've done on my screen here is I've tracked dating back to 2020, I believe, uh, May-ish of 2020. We have 17 different times that I've tracked major moves where this has crossed from being above 80 back down below 80. Now, this is on daily closures, so clearly any time that we did like this move here where we just kind of ranged above this wouldn't count right because we didn't actually close below same here and that's something that until we actually do close below is possible you know we could end up just ranging possibly putting one move higher but the 17 iterations that i've tracked you know dating back to 2020 where we've crossed below the 80 you could i've tracked all of the average pullbacks and what i've done if we double click and turn that off as we look over here i've tracked that these were the percentage pullbacks, average percentage pullbacks during the downtrend, which is what we've been in since we topped out at the end of 2021, and then the uptrend. Clearly in an uptrend slash a major bull market, which is what this entire move up here would be considered, right? Your, your pullbacks are going to be much shallower, but the crazy thing is, is all 17 you know times that I tracked this, we did see at least some sort of a pullback. Uh, before more upside so then what i've done from there is just on the top of the chart here i've put what the average pullback was during the bear market or the downtrend which is 9.84 percent what was the average pullback during the uptrend which was the bull market you know that was prior to the bear market of course 4.92 percent and then i've also taken all 17 uh examples here and the average there was 6.95 percent and then here on the chart with some purple horizontal lines I've taken those percentages and marked, you know, potential areas of interest. Should we, you know, follow some sort of an average pullback uh, on this potential, you know, 
drop below 80 on the stochastic uh, stochastic RSI. Question is, is there any, I guess, confluence with those targets? Well, yes. So we went ahead and uh, took away our indicator for a minute. If you look here on the 4.95%, that's actually the bottom of this red zone. I actually need to change that uh, to green, actually, as it's currently support. On my charts, I always use red as resistance, green as support. We're above it. So at the moment, it should act as at least some sort of support, right? So the 4.95% is this lower end back here, you know, uh, where we've recently bounced. That was the upper end of it. But, you know, we've had some areas where that has been support. Uh, dating back to here twice, right? So it's going to be an area of interest, and that's the 4.95. The, the just under 7% is where we bounced back here, and then the 9.8% happens to just fall right where we had our last major bounce before we hit that uh, trend line that we've been rejected on, you know, on multiple occasions. All that being said, as we kind of clear the chart back out, really what we're looking for is as far as a plan A, plan B is very, very simple. So plan A would be that. We kind of do the inevitable, not the inevitable, we do the unthinkable, sorry. And you know, we don't pull back, at least in the short term, as odds would suggest, especially if we drop below 80. And we actually break out of this uh, this falling wedge, right? But the biggest thing is, is if you date, go back to our, to our top, which happened at the end of 2021, late December, you had this high, you had a lower high, you had a lower high. I mean, this is what makes this pattern, right? Is a series of lower highs. For us to believe the trend is actually changing to a, to a positive is we need to at least take out the last lower high. So if we extend out this kind of line, in fact, I can just give you an alt H here real quick. Um, let's actually change that from purple to something like uh, just white. Okay, so what we really need to do, and even if it's just a short term move, is we need to take out that high. We need to put in a different high that's higher, something above 4100, right? And then at that point, if we pull back, we'd be looking for lower, uh, higher low ideas, right? We, might, we would start to look for some sort of a trend that's going in this direction rather than, you know, this direction. So that's that would be very much plan A. Uh, less likely at this point, at least in my opinion, but that would be uh, plan A. So now as we clean things back up, we're going to be on plan B, which is also very, very simple. And what I'm going to what I'm going to suggest, or at least what, what I'm planning for, is the idea that we see a pullback. You know, that's just what the statistics and odds tell me. But maybe we don't see the average of what we've seen in this downtrend. Now, the, the entire time we've been in this downtrend, uh, you know, the, the Fed's been you know, rate, uh, hiking rates, you know, anywhere from 75 basis points to 50. You know, we've got a 25 recent and rumors are that, you know, this next one could potentially be another 25. I'm guessing they're kind of, you know, toning it down. And soon, you know, hopefully at least, maybe we don't see any for a bit. And then when things get real bad, maybe we start seeing um, some rate declines, right? But, you know, I'm not going to get ahead of ourselves. But the point being is the market looks closer to a bottom to me than it does a top at this point which tells me that we can start looking out for higher low ideas rather than you know, major rejections where we keep putting in lower lows. Because again, we've had, we just talked about all the higher, you know, the lower highs. Well, guess what? On the other end of that, it's been low, lower low, lower low, lower low, right? For us to change trend, we need to put in either a higher high first, which was part of our plan A, or at least see a major higher low, which in this case, I'm gonna suggest that that maybe is what we see. Areas of interest for me would be, you know, first and foremost would just be the, the, the lower end of the uptrend pullbacks around 5%, somewhere back in my green box. Maybe we put in a double bottom right here, you know, and then later break above that. To me, that one's less likely, but it would be an area where I would, you know, if we happen to hang out there for a bit and start consolidating, that I would start looking for, you know, entry ideas on some of my favorite cryptos. And then the next level, or the level that I would buy the very, very most, would be this level that's the six, the average of all of the past couple of years, around 7%, which is this purple area, right? At around 36.50, which would be a higher low, right? You'd have this high, could be a higher low. It's also the area of bounce back here. And eventually, should it push up, kind of could create a little bit of a head and shoulders, inverse. We'll talk about that should it happen not anything to think about at the moment, but it would be a very good pattern to kind of, you know, later in 2023, you know, mid spring, early summer, maybe we see some sort of a breakout and we start trending, you know, 
higher, but we get ahead of ourselves there. But that's kind of the areas that I'll be watching for. And what would that translate uh, as far as it goes to the Bitcoin chart? We'll talk about that now. Now, as we transition over to the weekly chart here on Bitcoin, I just want to point something out before we zoom in a little bit further, just, just to the daily, is that one thing that we've done, you know, this past week, uh, you know, last week's closure is we've flipped this previous cycle's all-time high, which would have been you know, between about 19,000 and 19,000, about 800. Uh, 19,800 being the more key level for me, but anywhere between there, we've basically flipped as support, right? You can see that if we zoom in a little bit here that we were in this downtrend, uh, we were as low obviously as 15,000, we were kind of consolidating. We finally broke out, you know, with a bit of volume, not a huge, you know, volume spike compared to these back here, but it is the biggest volume spike we've seen in quite some time, right? What we did is now we're back above the previous cycle's all-time high, which, you know, people that trade on the major time frames, the higher time frames, your wells and such, that is a, that's a big deal. So if we, you know, if you're bullish, the last thing you'd want to see is us, you know, possibly lose that level, especially on the weekly. However, a retest of it on something like the daily, which we're going to talk about next, wouldn't be entirely, you know, bearish. In the short term, it could actually be very, very bullish as it's, you know, it's what you'd expect on these higher time frames as things kind of support get you know, resistances get taken out and flip to support and so on. So as we kind of zoom in here to the, the daily, you can see, okay, well, we had this big falling wedge that we broke out of, which the uh, top was right around 18,600. We broke above that zone we talked about. We also have the daily 200 SMA sitting right now at about 19.5. This to me would be the line in the sand right now, would be the top of this zone, kind of the 200 moving average on the daily. If we have a, you know, a little bit more of a pullback from where we're at now, which I'm not saying we will for sure, but if we do, where I'd be looking to pick up a Bitcoin, or in my case, altcoins, would be you know, a retest of anywhere between about 19.6, you know, with a wick, hopefully higher closures above about 19.8, preferably 20, but as we all know in crypto when you know things are going to the downside there tends to be some some scammy wicks that can go pretty low in fact as long as it wasn't something that closed in a higher time frame i wouldn't even be scared of a 19,000 wick um but as you know as long as it got bought up that's the biggest thing we'd want to see volume spikes telling us that you know buyers are stepping in the bulls are stepping in buying you know buying the dip so to speak so Plan A, which, uh, sorry, that'd actually be part of our plan B from the previous uh, segment there on the SP 500. You know, the pullback would be anywhere for Bitcoin between about 19K, preferably 19.5 to 19.8. Those would be the key areas that I'll be looking at for, you know, opening up some longs, you know, midterm holds on some altcoins. Plan A would be just a breakout now, which if we zoom in. So this is the four hour chart. And as you can see, the, the last two big highs that we've had. Uh, basically both got rejected right around 21,600. So clearly this is kind of like a little bit of a double top on lower time frames, which that little measure move probably has already played out. You know, yeah, it has basically the target was 20,400, which, you know, that's where the wells so far have bought, you know, bought the dip. So there's still some hope that we actually push higher, but what we want to see on at least a four hour time frame closure or, you know, or above is a flip of that 21,600, 21,650 ish, preferably. So basically, it would be us taking out this level, flipping it as support. And at that point, we could expect to see, you know, the next upper targets, which, which would be what? Well, for that, we'll just switch back over to the daily and we'll just keep it again very, very simple. Sometimes your simplest TA is the best TA, right? Like I said earlier. So clearly, you can see this area of about 21,000, you know, 500 to 600 has been resistance, you know, on a few different occasions it was there uh, the upper end was here you know back in here and if we can flip that as support right we break above that and it becomes support well what's the next area you can see there's been wicks up to about 228 you know back in here a few times so that would be my first target again we spoke about this um, in a video from a few days ago but really our big big target which I've already got the yellow line drawn over here. This is this would be you know this should, this should, could take weeks, maybe you know months to play out. But really, our upper target for this entire move, should it continue to play out over the course of the, you know early spring, uh, end of winter, early spring, would be about twenty six thousand eight hundred, right? Of course, there's going to be all these stops along the way, twenty two eight you know, 24 and so forth. So we'll talk about that. But at least in the short term, I would look for a push higher if this breaks to the upside of about 22,800, which from where we are now would be 
uh, hold on, let's pull this tool out. You know, that would be about a, you know, 10% move, which, you know, for Bitcoin, I guess, really isn't that crazy. But for the bear market, it sure would be. Now, as we move over to the Bitcoin dominance chart, this is the daily chart for Bitcoin dominance. Now, the video is getting a little bit long, so I'll try to kind of wrap things up quickly. For those of you that are new to Bitcoin dominance, just in a nutshell, understand that if this is going up, it's generally bad for altcoins. If it's going down, it's, you know, it's generally good. Now, as far as it relates to Bitcoin itself, it kind of just depends on which direction Bitcoin's going. Its dominance can often be going up while Bitcoin's going down. And, you know, and vice versa. So it isn't really a good way to necessarily gauge Bitcoin itself, but if you're trading altcoins, which I primarily do, it's a good way to at least gauge those. Now, in this case, we had this double bottom or, you know, close to a double bottom that we, we spoke about in our last video, which, you know, has broken out at this point. You, know, you kind of have a target back up here. And this major level we're watching for, you know, if we continue to push higher, would be around 44%. So there's a good chance that if Bitcoin and crypto and, and stocks in general, if everything pulls back some, there's a good chance, you know, without me going into too much explanation, that this could push higher in the short term. At which point, if it gets rejected here, which would be good for Bitcoin and, and, and altcoins to follow, this would be kind of the area on this chart, should we hit it, that we'd be looking for a potential rejection and good entries on our altcoins. You can see, obviously, it's been resistance on a few different occasions in the past. So uh, just something to keep an eye on. From there, I'll give you a quick update here on the total two chart, which is just the total uh, market cap of all the crypto, excluding Bitcoin. So if you look over here to the right, $523 billion. That means that that's how much money is in Ethereum and all of the altcoins. Um, so it's counting all of crypto, just just not Bitcoin. Now, I will uh, insert a quick clip from a video that I, I put out a few weeks ago or a week or so ago talking about the idea that if we broke above this level of uh, resistance, that we could see a push to this upper trend line. And then that would kind of be my, my short term, you know, target, good place to take profits and so forth. And, you know, as you can see, especially after you watch that clip, this is uh, exactly what, you know, what happened. But in the short term, you know, could we see a rally back up to retest this trend line one more time at least, which is up here around, you know, 530-ish billion. It's also where the 200 moving average sits right now on the daily chart here. You can see that that is what acted as resistance up here back in November of last year. So, you know, that's something that, you know, as we talk about the rest of the charts and give ideas of possibly short-term upside, at least for the next few weeks, possibly month, month and a half, this would be another chart that could support that uh, specifically for the altcoins. Okay then, now that that has happened, what's, you know, kind of our plan A, plan B for this? Now it all, it all ties together, but I just want you to understand kind of how I piece together these charts to get kind of an idea of what I would expect to be most likely. Now again, this, this rejection was kind of something, at least in the short term, that you would expect. Uh, bullish retest of around this area that we, you know, was that resistance all in here, the previous zone that we were in, you know, down here. A retest of around 400 and, you know, 80, 400, we'll say 490 billion would obviously be good. A good chance that then that maybe we consolidate for a bit and can break out of this. Um, you know, that would be plan, I guess, B. Plan A was, you know, the potential breakout, which of course would be us flipping. Um, you know, in this case, I would say we'd want to also flip this blue 200 EMA uh, because that's going to be, you know, pretty close to this trend line. If we could flip around 550 billion, which right now would be about 25 more billion dollars in the crypto as support, well, then we could expect to run up here to this more major level that if I put Alt H on the keyboard, support, support, support resistance 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 right and that's right around 600 billion so that would be kind of our plan a i guess would be a breakout and a little bit of an altcoin season that would most likely mean that back here on bitcoin dominance that we'd lost uh this area here flipped it back as resistance and we're trending back down here of course that would also mean on bitcoin itself that it's broken back above 21,650, you know and so forth and then just to finish off tonight's video we'll give you a quick update on the the link trade that i was in now i have closed that i took profits it hit all of the targets that i had from the previous couple of videos that i posted now now guys there is a link that i leave in the in the description of every video that i put out that's to my telegram group i haven't been as active in it recently as i used to be but I, i'm getting more active as you know as we kind of as time goes on i've been kind of busy but in that in that group my telegram group i update you know more often than my videos as far as what trades i'm entering where my targets are if i'm making any changes to my plan etc so 
Uh, I would suggest clicking that link in the description and joining my group if you want, you know, kind of more up to the minute or up to the day at least updates on what I'm doing. But I closed that trade out as it hit my all my targets, the, the last one being around 690. As you can see, there's a lot of confluence with that area as far as resistance. You had this 200 simple, which is this yellow moving average, which you can see we wicked up to on two or three occasions, but weren't able to or what weren't able to close a, a bottle a body, a candle body above. And so that was resistance. You had the underside of seven dollars, which was key resistance. And so at this point, I'm just looking more for some retest entries or at least some consolidation phase before you know any entry it is. Plan A for Link would be, you know, the less likely option would be that we somehow grind back up and flip $7, which is my major area of you know upper you know, overhead resistance as support, in which case, you know, I'll give you guys an update at that point, but you have targets of 750 to eight, and you know, even as high as $9. Um, plan B, which is, which is basically the, the plan that I'm currently you know, paying more attention to would be the idea that we retest this previous major area of resistance, which is around $6, right? So anywhere between about six and we'll say 620. If that gets retested on a Bitcoin pullback, you know, down to 19,820K, uh, even as low as the underside of this, which would be around 580, these would be the areas I'd be looking for another higher low, right? Low, higher low. And you know, that would be where I'd be looking for. And then in my targets, of course, at that point would be the same targets all over again, which is one of the nice things about trading coins like this in the short term is that sometimes you can just rinse and repeat, do the same trade all over again. So I will keep you guys posted. Just wanted to give you kind of a quick update on you know what's going on with Link. Thank you so much, my friends, for sticking around on your way out. If you can do me a gigantic favor and remember to hit the like, remember to also subscribe, leave a comment should you feel so inclined and we'll catch you in the next one. It's T-A-I